Well then, this is organized. What is up, Zedzin9 here and welcome back to another video. Today, as you can see, lift parts going all over the place. I'm going to be doing a tour, but the reason everything is so disorganized is quite simply it's a day of dusting these lift parts because a lot of them have got quite a lot of dust built up on them. So the plan is dust them, film them, move on to the next one. So I'm going to place the camera right down here. I need to watch very carefully where I'm placing this tripod. Right down here. So in here you're soon going to see the first lift part I want to show. Uh, maybe, depends on which one it is. There's some of them that are not really going to be able to go here because they need to lean up against a wall or whatever. So this isn't always going to be the constant place, but this is the primary place for when, it, when I can sit things here. So I need to think about what I'm going to start with. And what I'm actually going to start with is something that doesn't need dusting, because it's too early for a cutscene yet. So what we're going to start with is my keyring for various lift part key rings. No, never mind that, just ignore that. Uh, various lift part keys. Um, so we're going to start off with this one. This is Dewhurst key for my UK lift COP which you will see later. I've not got it in this room because it is an absolute brute. I don't even want to try and move it. I don't think I'd be able to. Uh, so there's that. We've then got my lift button presser tool for safely riding lifts. You can see it's got no focus. If it will focus though, you might be able to see. Ah, it's got no chance, is it? You might be able to see it has ZZ9 engraved on it, which is pretty cool. Fling that over the ring, like so. We have Northeast UTA key. You'll see what that's for in a minute. I'm not going to spoil that just yet. We then, of course, have the one and only Dewhurst button keyring. I think, was it US9015? I've probably got it wrong again, but there you go. <laughs> I'm going to guess US9015 uh, from none other than Matt from Mr. Matt and Mr. J. Again, big thank you for that. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, yeah, I think I said at the time I couldn't quite put my level of thanks into words. That is still the case, you know. I'm going to link that video up in the top right where my thumb is right now, so you can watch it. Recommend you do that after this tour to learn how that came to my possession. Another Dewhurst, so just whatever. And finally, we have of course the Schindler Trolley Token, which has been featured in a bunch of videos. Let's get Schindler on both sides. This is the better side. Nice and shiny. And we're back to this key, which we might use later on in the UK lift panel. So that is that key. So now is when we're going to start cutting because now we begin looking at the actual lift parts. I just want to make sure I've put this stuff back on the ring in the right way, which I appear to have done so, which is very good. Oh dear, that. It's going upside down, but anyway, what will we start with? I know we'll start with the signs, the stuff that doesn't really need much going on. So, first up, we have Mr. Matt and Mr. Che Otis panel logo, which came with the keyring. Again, massive, massive thank you. As you can see, it's got the uh, Otis external floor indicator panel. This uh, one would have gone ground one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I believe. Was it? I think so. I think that's what it was. Let's see, it's got Mr. Matt and Mr. Che. Let's get the arrows. So once again, big thank you for this. And moving on then, our next sign. I don't think it needs dusted, but if it does, I'm going to just quickly wipe it down. No, it's actually fine. I don't, don't need to do that. Our next sign says, This lift is for the conveyance of goods only. Persons are forbidden to travel in the lift, which I am covering part of the message. 
I forget, I think this was an eBay. An eBay find for a Christmas present, I think it was. Correct me if I am wrong on that, however. I think that is what it is. I don't know why I asked you to correct me if I'm wrong because I didn't actually do a video on these at the time, but I'm pretty sure this is a Christmas present. So that is that. It's a goods lift, of course. Persons are forbidden to travel in the lift. Oh dear. Where's the lift? I have no idea. Next up, needs dusted. Next up, we have this sign here. I need to cover it a little, or try to. Lift motor room. It's a glass sign with the letters on it. Letters are stuck on the back here, I can feel, I think. Anyway, they actually... I actually feel like they go inwards when, you, when, when I run my fingers over them. It's a glass sign with the white letters. Would have been on, I assume, a black door or a similarly darker coloured door because there's no point putting this on a white door, you wouldn't be able to read it. Uh, it's a glass lift motor room sign and sadly this this particular room is not a motor room, this is a room full of Lego and currently every single lift part, so well, almost, all but one. So there you go, lift motor room. And here we have an old sign here. This came this was this came with the um, motor room sign, the goods lift sign and the next couple of signs I'm showing you. This came it was in pretty bad condition but it was restored up for Christmas Day and as you can see, lift on push button control, slide this piece of paper up, it's gonna be a little bit sticky initially, but you can actually make it say different things. So it also can say if I can get it to come out, turn over go back in. You can also make it say lift on attendant control so when you've got someone there operating it instead of just you know you press the buttons. Of course on push button control is like well you know normal service for most lifts nowadays. It's double sided so we've got extra sides here. You can see this way up it says lift service suspended by MPBW Maintenance engineers, whatever MPPW sounds for. I am not quite sure on that. And we have, of course, a second thing to put on this side, which is lift requisitioned for removals by accommodation officer. I wonder if that is the lift getting removed or if it's being used for removing something from the building. I, I forget, to be honest. Someone will probably correct me in the comments, I'd say, but that is this sign. Put it back on the push button control because we like it when lifts are on push button control. So that is that sign, and I do actually have a second one which is almost identical. Here it is, you see, it's almost identical. I've got that one on lift service suspended because why not? It's pretty much the same. So there's not a whole lot really to say about this one, apart from let's move on to the next sign, which it needs dusted. Okay, next sign's a bigger one. You did not just see me kill the Kone button there with it. We'll just ignore that that happened. But anyway, here we have a sign denoting, I believe these are serial numbers, of three different lifts. Lift A is P16716, lift B, P16717, and the goods lift, P16718. I have no idea where uh, this came from, but obviously a place that had three lifts, probably vintage lifts. You don't see these signs of modern lifts nowadays. Uh, so I imagine this might have been from a building which had older lifts. Uh, yeah, A lift, B lift, and goods lift. Wonder what type of lifts they were. It is yet to be known. If any, if someone, I bet you, if someone has seen this sign, like when it was actually in use, wherever it was, I bet you someone will let me know. But I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder where this came from. This again came with the other signs, but I don't know where I say where this. Where I say I don't know where this came from. I, mean, I don't know what. Uh, where this 
was originally in use. And it'll be interesting to find out where it is. So with that being said, I'm going to clear out some space here because I've got a lot of things behind me that I need to move before we get started with the next piece. So I will be back when I'm ready to start the next piece. Alright, next up in our tour we have, of course, the Shepherd Home Lift panel. And you see it's got this button, this one. Don't want to press it, it's slightly broken, this red bit could pop out if I press it. Up button has been known to fall out a few times, but works. Down button uses contact system, say a micro switch. Light is the same as the down. You can hear this one's a micro switch as well. See Shepherd Home Lift, manufactured under license by Hammond and Champness Limited, London, London E17. That was a very weird way I tried to say London there. And the capacity, 350 pounds. Very much a home lift. But there you go. Up, down, light, emergency stop. And I just realised I forgot to dust this one before showing it, which is very great. But it doesn't actually look too bad, so it should be. Fine enough, but I'm going to give it a dust and then on to the next one. Alright, next up we have the absolute brute, the Stana Logic Box. Of course, if we take a zoom in, you can see the workings. So you've got 5 volt, 12 volt, clock, RSI, 54321, 54321, all these lights. I don't remember exactly what all of these do, but if you want to see a very similar, or I think even identical box in action. How about, oh that part's a bit broken, oh dear. Careful with that, didn't realise that was a little bit broken. Um, if you want to see one of these in action, how about I link a video up top right now, a Mr. Matt and Mr. Che video of one of these in action. And you can see exactly what all of these do in a two floor Stana Hydro. I don't know if this was also a two floor Hydro, or if this was a different uh, amount of floors of hydro. These things can go up to five. You can see five, four, three, two, one, so five five landings. I think that's call and that's is that inputs and outputs, I forget. Um but anyway I think that's I think that's how it works. So with that being said, like I say you can check out that video if you want to see it in action and I have had a peek recently you might be able to see if I zoom in carefully circuit board for these lights at the front is still there you can just about see it just poking through there which suggests to me that everything that was inside this when it was in the lift more room is still there I don't have a screwdriver things to take this apart and I don't really want to do that in this video so I might save that for a future video but that is that. I forgot to dust this as well. I'm just going showing the parts then dusting, which is not how I wanted to do it. But anyway, I'm going to dust this and then we will move on to the next part, which is going to be one of my favourite parts in this whole collection. Alright, two in one here. We're going to start off with none other than the same picture from the one and only Safety Bakes Lifts. Make sure you go give him a sub. Uh, top right at the top right of the screen if it allows me to promote channels there. I think it does. Uh, you'll see the link to his channel now. Make sure you go subscribe. And it's sitting on top of the Series 1 panel. So as you can see, indicator. We have here a, I think that's a fire service light. Uh, overload light. Hold on, can I shield this? No, I can't. Uh, overload light there. Blank. And a light switch, which we'll get back to in just a moment. This lift was at one point maintained by Heartlifts, serial number 78NJ7301 from 1990, 21 persons, 1600 kilos, and down here we've got our buttons, 3, 2, 1, open which came the wrong way up but I fixed it, and the alarm which had an issue I also fixed. Of course with series 1, you press it on this side. Not going to get a whole far. Press it on this side where the micro switch is. Make it do things. See again. It's the same with all the buttons. And this is where you find out where the northeast UTA key comes in. Because if I t 
take this key and see I can actually place it in here like this and turns the light switch. Big thank you to STL Elevators for uh, informing me which key I needed for the switch. The Northeast UTA key. And it's going to be a bit of a brute to come out, but that is the key, and that is, of course, Mr. Series 1 from Falkirk. Press these buttons again because they make a very satisfying click. And with that being said, I'm going to move this over to the other room now, and then we will continue in a minute. Alright, next tab, next tab, good start to the next clip. Next up we have the Vimec button, which I've just dusted. See, Vimec easy moving, got the button here, very nice press to it, nice loud one. This sort of, I don't know if it's rubber or plastic or whatever it is, that's over the button, I'm pretty sure is not meant to be here. However, I can't open it up. These are just sort of yeah. You can just turn, you can just turn my hands, whatever. It doesn't actually take the front plate off. Don't know if I'm just missing a trick with it, but right now I feel like I don't think I can open it up. So until I can open it up, I have no chance of taking this this thing off and showing the button for its full worth. But in the meantime, you can still press it and you can still enjoy that really nice, satisfying press with it. So that is the Vimec. Next up we have the very first part I ever got, the Schindler FIGS call station. We'll all remember this I'm sure, if we don't, I mean, this is the first lift part I ever got, the first lift part I ever did a video of, it was one of the earliest videos I released that I made in this camera, and this part of course, massive sentimental value, as well as a really nice fixture. You can see you get your glass top with the Schindler logo, up button, down button, turn it over, you can see there's a circuit board in there. I've got no way of opening this up or anything, but it doesn't really matter. This of course came from Schindler themselves. So a big 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 thank you for that. First lift part I ever got. It means so much. Even today, even with the giant collection, you know, this one still has so much sentimental value and it always will. So yeah, just that, that that's the thing with this with this button. It's a nice fig it's not only just a nice fixture, it's also got all that sentimental value. So yeah, that's just just awesome. That's <laughs> just awesome. Let's just put it put it that way to save me scrambling for words for thirty minutes. And yeah. Nice Schindler call station. Let's see what comes up next, eh? Next we have something that is a more recent addition, in fact quite a recent addition, the Arona call station. eBay item, it's got the one button here, the press is really nice actually. Arona logo with the black glass, turn it over, you can see this mammoth circuit board. Let's take a quick scan down it like we did in the video dedicated to this. So much going on here. This, I believe, is the sounder. Don't know what all these switches do. Ooh. Don't know what all these switches do. But yeah, Arona button. Very nice button, actually. You can actually see the button is a completely separate unit. The circuit board is like an add-on almost. Like, you could use this button without the circuit board just fine, I reckon. The circuit board is there for like the beeper and probably communicating the logic. So yeah, like if you wanted to wire one of these up, you could probably just do away with the circuit board and just use the four pins on the actual button. But then again, I'm no expert, so someone else will probably be able to tell me. But here we have the nice modern Arona button, which I think is this fiction line is definitely still in use today. I think it's what was it, 3G or something? I think Arona recently changed a logo as well. It's not quite the same as this anymore. Don't know if they still use that on the buttons or if they've changed it on them as well. But certainly this is 
very recent button. I think it actually came brand new as well. So yeah, a Rona button. Let's see what comes up next. If you ever want to play a game of look in the mirror, who do you see? This is very much the part to do it. This Gen 2 lantern, as you can see, reflective as anything. Hello! <laughs> you can see green up. I think it's green up, red down, I'm not quite sure. You can see in the back, up. This is how you tell which way it is up. It says up. Very simple inputs for this board, unlike the Arona. 24 volts, up, down, Otis. Read the number on it. 33. First F is for focus. In fact, the first F is for failure, and then the dash is meant to be on. And then the second F is focusing, so failure of focusing. I said on, I meant off. Nice professional content. Failure of focusing, AA25170N, 68 something, whatever that is. But yeah, it's very reflective. I think it's like, I don't know if it's brass or whatever, it could be. But <laughs> very reflective. You can see all around, you can actually see some of the other buttons here. I wonder if that spoils anything. Hmm. Anyway, here we have a little Gen 2 lantern. Another eBay one. A very cheap eBay one, actually. Probably one of the cheapest parts that I've got from eBay. And, yeah. Very reflective. Bargain Gen 2 lantern. Seeing as we're on the call station theme, we'll go for something really recent, which is this Wadsworth. I'll get you the other one in just a minute, but this is the one that doesn't have the box. See the button? Does press, you need to hold the box in, you need to hold the guts in quite firmly for it to press optimally. So you can get it to press. If we look at how the back actually works, you can see it here. Ignore this wire, that's just holding everything in place. You can see the disc here connected directly to the button. That moves back where the button goes, it hits the two contacts, completes the circuit. If you continue to press it in further, you'll notice that the bit in the middle goes further because the spring has just got a little bit more room, so just does that without the trying to make the disc go any further. You can see actually there's a pin through that central thing that keeps the disc from falling out or whatever. And pretty simple system, vintage, so well built. Wadsworth button from the, I forget the exact name now, it's the something something tobacco factory or something, I can't remember what it is, the Stanley Dock Tobacco Warehouse in Liverpool or something like that. eBay item again, but that's the building that it came from. And now we're going to show you the button that actually has the box, because we do actually have one with the box. Which is this one right here. See, got a box, it's cool, this one has the Wadsworth name on it, and if you look in here, I don't have a torch, so that's helpful, but I think I've done this in my sort of unveiling video of these, the button is actually held in place by the back of this box, if I was to pull this out, if I was to try pulling the button out, you can hear it moving around. That's because there is still just a little bit of room in the box for the button to manoeuvre. But the button is held horizontally and vertically by the plate and forward backwards by the box. Yeah, pull it out, you can hear it go clonk where it hits the plate, clonk where it hits the box again, clonk, 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 clonk. And these buttons are just really nice. I really enjoy pressing these. They just have that old build, the old heavy duty quality feel to them. Very satisfying press and just awesome buttons. Wadsworth. This came from the same place as the one that I just showed you without the box. These came together. And yeah, epic old buttons. It's getting a little bit heavier now, so I'm beginning to feel the weight of it just a bit. So we're now going to move on to the next button. Here we have ourselves a little, I believe, generic number four. Also has a nice satisfying press for more than button as well. Clicky clicky. Always 
wondering if it felt a bit like Otis, but I know it's not actually Otis, but I'm pretty sure it isn't. If it is, someone will correct me. If you look on the back, very, very simple. Looking on the back, everything's hidden away. Just got simple inputs. It's probably 24 volt, like most things. Can't really tell. Uh, I don't know what colour this will light up either. That is, that remains to be seen. Again, if I had a torch, I'd try and see what colour it light up, but I'd need to go and find my Lego ones for that, and, you know, can't really be bothered climbing over everything, so... There's that button. I'll tell you what, what I'll do, after recording when I'm tidying things away, I'll try it, and I'll put in the editing what colour it turned up. And if I forget to put it in editing, pin comment. I'll put it there instead, and there's a fly flying around. I don't know if you caught it on the camera there, but there's a fly in here which is annoying me. But anyway, that's this little generic 4 button. So, let's have a look at what comes next, I wonder. Will it be old? Will it be new? Or will it be somewhere in between? Well, the answer is somewhere in between. It's a uh, Otis Series 1 call button. This one, I think, came off eBay. It was listed as new, but... Unless there's still Series 1 being produced for replacements in the US, I'm not so sure about how new it is, but this is from the US. It doesn't have nearly as audible a click as my COP, which of course is from Falkirk. If you look at the back, a circuit board, there's a lot going on here. Got your lamp here as always, your inputs. There's a lot more going on here, it's a lot more complex than what the UK one is. However, in the US, the door open and the door close, maybe the, uh, maybe not the alarm, maybe, maybe not, probably the alarm as well, but door open, door close and alarm in the US use the COPs, sort of, just the little micro switches only, the clicky ones, whereas the floor and call buttons, I believe, use these circuit boards. Give nearly as audible a click. This came without screws, which was fun. Had to get screws for it. it. Wasn't easy to put this all together in a way that it would sort of steal it together and not move around a bit. And if you listen very closely, still haven't quite got there, but all the components are held together and it presses right, so obviously been done right. This is a series one, it's an up button. It's actually got a number on the top here. What does that say? 7069AF11. Whatever that means. Probably a serial number. I don't know. Anyway, there is the up call button. Here we have an armor elevator. I believe this is a tie clip, if I remember right. You can see it's got armor elevator, uh, non focused camera company. Actually, a Kone company. I was wrong. It's not an unfocused camera company, it's a Kone company. So this is, I think Armour got bought out by Kone at some point, I have no idea when, someone will probably tell me. But, as you can see, it's a, it's a tie clip on the back, you can see it's got the chain, which I've wrapped around just because why not, convenience. And, oh come on, there you go. Armour, elevator, tie clip, and the thing's now hanging down, which is very nice indeed. So with that being said, I'm thinking what I'm going to move on to next, and I have an idea. Let's move on to the next thing. Here, of course, we have the step panel. This is our next item in the tour, it's a step panel. You know this, nice, satisfying press of the step buttons. As so. See, it's got a nice little bit of shape to it. It's got a rounded top, rounded bottom, like so. Love that press. On the back it's got all the wires that are just dangling around because why not? Let's take a look at the circuit board. That's what the circuit board looks like. There's a little diagram on here if I can get it. Zoom in. Yeah, it's gonna focus. Yeah, you can just do it, make out a diagram there. I think this is, this is definitely another EBI item. I think it was new as well. And yeah, I just love the press. It's just really satisfying. So there we have it. 
the Shanghai Step Panel. Holding the camera by the tripod for this one, but we have the Otis 12 floor dumbwaiter panel. You see, you've got the in use light, which actually looks like it's lit up, it's not really. I promise. The other light is a car here light, but you can't really see it. I'm going to zoom in a bit for pressing the buttons. These buttons have no guts to them, but what we basically did is we put some springs inside in between the front of the button and the metal plate. Speaking of which, I haven't dusted this, which is great. But, however, we'll carry on. So we put some, they're actually not even proper springs, they're like just sort of metal wire that was shaped into springs. Based on a sort of, based on an actual spring that we can get anywhere. We sort of tried to replicate that for each of these. It actually worked pretty well in the end, so we're going to press each of these buttons. They got 11, 10, 7, 6, 5, a bit sticky, 4, 3, 2, 1, C. 12 floors of Otis Dumbwaiter that now needs dusted before we move on to the next part. Next up we have the Otis Floor Indicator, which is a minor case of missing guts, however, still have the metal plate and the screen, the glass I should say. You can see it's indeed the Otis. If you turn it over, you can see it's got this foam on the back here for the sort of the black outline around it that you just saw. And where the indicator the indicator probably married in these four holes, I'd say. Maybe. I don't really know. It looks like there's room to carve out the exact same the opposite way around, so it depends which way that was fitted in, how the indicator would go in. But you'll all probably you'll all probably have seen one of these at some point. Very common. Very common. Oh it's two thousand, oh it's gen two. All have it, it's been in use since what, ninety five I'd say? 95 is as old as I've seen an image of, I think. It might have been older, it might have gone back to 93. I don't think it would have gone past 93, to be honest. But definitely 95. Definitely, I'm pretty sure there's no Europas after 95, so it's probably 95 that the 2000s went into full swing. But anyway, there is the No Guts Lotus Floor Indicator. Alright, next stop on this collection tour, we have the Otis 2000 VF panel from the Thistle Centre in Stirling. This is actually still on location before it's even been taken home, but I thought why not record this clip just now while I've got the camera going. So you've got three buttons, minus one, minus three, shop them all, close button, alarm button, can't press it. For some reason, can't press that open button. Speaker unit would have gone there, minus one, minus three shops. There's the indicator and the capacity plate right there. Down here we've got its door track logos, the two of them. Otis, Otis. Pretty large door tracks. This, this had two sets of doors, so two door track logos. And up here we have the indicators. Got this one with the cracks in it. Don't know why I'm showing the one with the cracks in it and not have these the other way around where I'd show the guts of that one in the front of the other one, but whatever. And here is the guts to these. So we're going to take a quick pan. Like so. There's a speaker for the chime. And there is the circuit board. So that's what one of these look like with all the guts in. generic floor indicator circuit boards. You can see we have two 5x7s with a 1x9 in the middle of it. Probably just like a divider if you like. Plenty of LEDs there for you. That's what the front looks like. And if I turn them over we can see what the back looks like. And it looks like this with 
all these various components that make it up. This one's the exact same. These are identical boards. Identical boards. eBay item. No idea where they came from. eBay item just like the Otis, but it didn't come with the Otis into gear. But anyway, on to the next thing. I'm just going to stick with circuit boards here to be honest. We've got Lift Technic Limited board right here. We have Infineon, Bosch, Siemens, all in one go. Various chips here, whatever. Various other components. More components, 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 components. It's all about the components here. Got connections, even more connections. Which one's a broken one? That one's a broken one. More chips and things. Giant, giant. Neither a battery, I think it is. New concept of lithium battery. Interesting. Samsung. So we have Samsung, Siemens, Bosch, Infineon, all in the one Lift Technic circuit board. Very, very nice. So well, there it is. A Lift Technic circuit board. And I think I've got another circuit board to show as well. So how about we take a look at that? Bet you can recognise what this is from one very distinctive feature. That's right, it's a Kone Floor Indicator circuit board. I believe this would have been inside the lift because it's got the arrow as well. As you can see, the dot matrix and numbers, there's your arrow. I think this has still got protective covering on it actually. Can't be bothered taking it off. So, yeah, that's that. <laughs> see, it's got barcode there, whatever. Capacitors, probably. Turning it over, there's a whole heap of chips and things. Just like the last circuit board. 331, very important number. No idea why. But it is. Let's see, it looks like, it's, it looks like it's light emanating from that. It's just a gap in the board. <laughs> so that is the board. And I'm looking for the copyright Kone logo, but I can't actually see it. So maybe this one doesn't have one. Hmm. Hmm, he says. Anyway, you can see there's actually four different sets of 8x8 dot matrix there. It's a complete 16x16 16 16 matrix. Which is interesting, since I think this model, if I remember right, unless this is some, unless this is going to be like a weird one where it's D40 and we've got the arrow as a separate unit. No, it's not. It's not because this is the arrow right here. I find that quite weird because usually Kone numbers are 7 by 11 in terms of width and height. So why would they have a 16 by 16? That doesn't quite make sense. But it's Kone. Who knows? Unless, unless someone asks, there's no way of knowing so. Not saying ask, but if someone knows, why not let why not let me know, eh? Huh? And there is a Kone floor indicator circuit board with a directional indicator, so I'm assuming it's internal. Alright, next we have Otis logos. These are fridge magnets, as you can see. One of them is just a globe, and the other one looks a bit more like a manual crank with the down and the up. Now, when I got these, I got two of each, but now I only have one of each, so I wonder where the other one of each has gone. Well, if you want to find out, top right corner, still got two info cards left and this is going to be one of those two. How about you go check out that video and see where these two went? Because I think you'll find they've gone to someone who's featured on this channel quite a lot. So here we are, Otis Fridge Magnets, a globe and the hand crank sort of design sort of a thing going on. Very professional way of ending this little clip, isn't it? Alright, you should all recognise this. I've featured it a lot of times on the channel, but here we have none other than our 72 this year. 72 year old Evans Lifts 
COP. They came from, what was it, Incoop Burton Brewery, I think it was? Don't quote me on that. It's been, I think, over two years since I got this. Got this. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, no, yes. Over two years, I think, since I got this. Naturally closed stop button, of course. Ground, dock, one, to an alarm. Big box. Got painted, of course, because when it came, it was super, 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 super rusty. And uh, yes, as always, this is the second part I ever got. If I didn't already mention that. Oh, that's sticking a bit there. Hmm. That might have just been the way I was pressing it. Uh, 72 years old, still holding up really well. I think this plate is newer. These buttons are original, the box is original. And yeah, just another epic piece, really. Everything here. I'd say awesome pieces. I mean, I'm grateful to even have one piece, let alone all these pieces, you know? It's like amazing to have all of this, you know? I just, I don't really know what else to say apart from that. I'm struggling for words with them saying this, but with that being said, let's move on to the next part. Here's something I can't really spend much time on because I don't really know what it is. It's a weird motor of some description. It came with the uh, likes of them circuit boards, the Stana box, and I've not really got much clue what it is. It's just some weird motor of some sort. I don't really have much of a clue. If someone who's seen something like this wants to let me know what it is, I would very much appreciate it because I'm just a little bit clueless on it. <laughs> not really sure what's going on here, but anyway, mystery motor. Um, yeah, that's all really I know about it right now. For those of you who like bad jokes, prepare for these. These are lift buttons. Yep. That's right, lift buttons. I can see well not laughing at all at that pun. But it's, it's what it is. It's got a lift drawing on it. The buttons aren't DDA compliant on that button. Look at how high those are related to the doors. Oh dear. Also, I think the doors are jammed. Hmm. Maybe the holes in the button are stopping the doors from opening. Same with all of those ones. There we've got three of them. And these are the three of them. The lift buttons. I'm not going to say that anymore for these because I can just see that. It's just... yeah. It's... it is what it is, that pun. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of it. Is it any good? Is it not? Whatever. <laughs> Let's see what comes next. Probably the smallest standalone item, and it's only standalone because it doesn't have a button to go in, is this Dewhurst C3... S circuit board. Two LEDs, two connections. Very simple. And it doesn't have a button. This is a shame. So I think... It deserves a button to go in, it doesn't have one, which is sad, because, you know, who doesn't love a button with a circuit board in it? So maybe one day we'll find a use for it, but for now, it just sits standalone. Here we have a... Well, I'm going to call it a multi-key, because there's multiple keys. We have... whatever that is. Large square. Small square. And a triangle. On top we have smaller square. On the bottom, hexagon. So who knows how many of those would actually ever be used in terms of lifts. Triangle, yes. That square, I don't know, one of these squares probably. Maybe more than one size. Not quite sure. But anyway, the triangle, of course, very synonymous with lifts. And yeah, multi-key. Multiple things with it. Wonder what all sorts of things you get up to with just this one key. I wonder indeed. But anyway, let's see if we get any Dewhurst, Leicester, or Otis next. Let's find out. 
This next lot then is what I would kind of describe as a bit of a grouping. We have seven Otis black button pieces here. These don't have a panel or anything to go to, and these are actually smaller than the ones on the dumbware panel. However, these are still really nice. These are another one of my early, uh, early finds as well. eBay item. I think these are like four, fifth arrival, so it went Schindler, Evans, Shepard, Kone, no it didn't. Schindler, Evans, Shepard, Kone, Inspection Control, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and then I think it was these. And then I think it was these seven Otis Black Button pieces. I can't remember, it's in the right order on my channel. You can have a look for yourself after the video, but here we are. Seven pieces right here. You can see one's bigger than all the others. Don't know why, it just is. One, two, four, five, and six with two blanks. And some of these have seen better days, some of them have seen worse days or whatever, I don't know. But with that being said, that is these seven parts before three of them, by the looks of things, fall out of my hand. Alright, here we have the Otis V shape for the shaft door. This, in a real lift, you just find this. Slapped on the shaft or something like that. You put in the V key, and it un and you can use that to unlock the shaft door. Of course, V key very synonymous with old Otis, so get a lot of them from what? Let's think, sixties, seventies, seventies and newer, or I mean older. Sorry, seventies and older. They would have this. I don't know exactly when triangle became the norm, but. I guess it'd be like 70s or 60s and then older than anything older than that. Can't remember exactly. Again, someone will probably let me know at some point. But I think this came with like so the Otis indicator and the something else I'm probably sure. I don't think I have actually. Well, I'll show the rest of that lot coming up, I guess. But definitely that Otis indicator without the guts, this came with that. So, yeah, the V key for the Otis shaft or the old Otis shaft door. It's Lester time. We have a Lester Controls up call button right here. This is a complete call button. You can see the back of the board. The focus. Lester Controls, four resistors, one big, three small. Here's your inputs. This call button came in really, really bad condition, but permanent marker, as always, does a trick. That actually doesn't have the worst press in the world to it, you know? It's not a bad press, to be fair. Not saying it's the best, but I'm not saying it's the worst. So that is your Lester up button, and to go with it, sort of, we have a down button. This one had to get some restoration as well, and this one's by no means complete. I think it's slightly broken as well, to be honest. But, <laughs> there's the down button. As you can see, looks very, 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 very similar. Except the arrow points the other way, and the brails are slightly different. But, with that being said, I've just dropped it because I am so professional, and also I felt like I had a bit of dust on my nose or something. But anyway, there's the Lester buttons. I'm going to see if I can put this back together. Should be able to put it back together. In fact, I literally just have. I think there's like part of this button is like missing permanently. Like it's just gone, which is not optimal. There you have it, list of buttons. And here we have a little Kone KSS four seventy up button. Not in best of shape. This was obviously in use at some point and taken off. Doesn't have a click to it anymore. And on the back you can see, yeah, seen better days, definitely. However, the circuit board actually still looks fine. Which is very interesting indeed. 2011 copyright, Kone. And yeah, it's an up button. <laughs> I don't know if this still works anymore. It doesn't have a click, so I doubt it does. These things usually do have a click. I can't really feel it. It does still press in a little, but... No, I don't think this is going to work, but... You never know. You need to take someone to find out a try, and I 
I'm not going to bother finding out. So that is this slightly beat up looking Kone button. So now we get on to the Dewhurst Marathon as it was, and my camera battery is low. Great. To Dewhurst C3 bodies with an open and a 5 faceplate in them. This, they both have a C3S circuit board in them as well, but I've already seen one of those, so there's no need to examine those in detail because they're all pretty much exactly the same. In fact, they are exactly the same. Up and five. And to go with these, I might need to do a quick once over with the duster first, which I am just going to do because why not? I say to go with these, but also compatible with these, I have an alarm and another five. Those button bodies that came from Dewhurst and it was two fives that came with them. They opened the alarm were separate and came with things like the Otis indicator. But pretty cool to see. We've got many different compatible face plates. And now on to the next thing, which is going to be a no entry indicator. I'm not going to break this down because I don't have the battery left. But here is a no entry indicator. As you can see, I've just lay up no entry. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory, and yeah, it looks really nice. I need to give it another dust. I will ignore that. And I have kept. I've moved the duster while I was meant to put the indicator. Silly me. Don't know what I'm doing really. Never have. If you ever thought I did, you were silly. So next up on the list, there's a lot of nothing going on on the screen right now. The complete buttons. So, pretty simple, up and a down, C3D boards, three LEDs, two sets of inputs for that, and pretty simple. So now I'm going to save this recording before the camera cuts out and I'm going to get a power source for it. Yep, yeah, we're now on mains power. I think the battery just got a little bit low, so it didn't cut out luckily, but put it on the power just to make sure it doesn't. Have Dewhurst jumbo alarm button, which I will I not take apart now that I am sure the camera isn't going to cut out or anything. We take the front plate off, take that off, face plate, take the face plate off, clear bit, take the clear bit off, there you have it. Those are the buttons. C3D board again, I think. I'm just going to call this a C3 jumbo body because it uses a C3D board. And that is your jumbo alarm button. And because this is together, the inside is perfectly dust free. So we put this back together on camera. So this bit goes in first. Press it a couple times, make sure it's in. And the faceplate, and then that clicks in, like so. And Mr. Alarm Button is happy and complete again. So with that being said, let's see what comes next. Alright, here we have this Dewhurst panel, which you'll all know. Press. That presses like so. And when I connect up this with this, watch what happens. Now there's power to it, and... Lights up and presses. White when idle, green with a beep, white when idle, red with a beep. The top micro switch does the light. It's hard to actually see the colour from this far out, so let's make it not so far out with a little bit of camera movement. Green, beep 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 Red, beep 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 this one's a little bit sticky. This one works perfectly. And that right there is your light up, oh, my light up do her button. I just realised I forgot to put something back with the alarm button, so I'm going to do that real quick while you watch that button lit up. Beep 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 beep. So with that being said, on to the next part. All right, here is the Kone KSS 370 call station, and this one 
also lights up. The lighting does not look very bright here because I've got very strong lights on. However, if you put this in a not so well lit area, you will notice it actually does light up pretty well. So I'm not sure, not sure how well used this was, but it does look like it probably could light up better if it wanted to. But it's got a fifth. I think it's a 15 volt voltage regulator on it, running it with 12 volts. So it's not optimal. However, it does still do the job. Lights up when you press it. These buttons have got the click to them. These are in good condition. Looking at it, this up button looks like the lights are slightly worse condition than down. So perhaps that was just the one that was used more. But with that being said, we are going to unplug this part now. Because, why not? Save a bit of power. Not have the supply on for too long, whatever. I'm going to actually just leave it there because it's resting against the next part which if I zoom out you will see to be none other than the inspection control. Now I don't remember when I last showcased this and I also just realized I have dusted the last couple of parts but as you can see if we take a look at the front here we have the down button, run, nope Inspection, normal, come on, work, very heavy stop button, stop, release, and on the side, we have a light switch, need to zoom in, help if I zoomed in, didn't it, focus, light on top which there's still a bulb in there can't really see this at the crown there you can see the bulb there now that is the inspection control so I've got these three parts to dust and then we will move on to the final one two three four that I've got in this room another piece which comes with the Otis indicator is this security camera you can see the Thing there. It is a camera just tucked in there. It's all there except the wires to the power source and whatever. This thing spins around, this thing here, this ring spins around as well. Old camera definitely used. Still got this protective covering on it though, which is interesting. Big security camera, very heavy. Can't really hold it. Otis, the old Otis external floor indicator, directional indicator I mean. I said floor indicator, it's really not. It's a directional indicator. As you can see, up arrow, I think it's white, down arrow is red, and of course we have the distinctive sound. And again. Distinctive Otis Bell. If you look just on the back here, you can't really see a whole lot of what's going in there, on in there. You can maybe see a little bit. Some wire broken out. But that is the Otis Lantern. So now on to what I believe are the final two parts I've got in here. And then it's onto the part that I could not take through here because it is so big. Right, the Dewhurst US85, the ground floor call panel. First for the button. Where's the indicator? It's anyone's guess, it's never been there. Never had one. Probably had one when it was installed, but it's not been there in all the time I know this lift. Of course, this has actually come out of a modernization. Modernization done back in October slash November 2019. Got COP first in October, and then I got the LOPs, this one and the other one which I'm about to show you, on the weekend that this went into service. I think it went into service on like Thursday or Friday. Got these on the Sunday. If I remember right. 
So this is this one, like I say, it's never had an indicator. I don't know why, but there's never been an indicator in this one. And yeah, just love pressing this up button. Just like that press. US 85, the well-built Dewhurst line. This is, I believe, hold on, I'll calculate, 37 or 38 years old. It's held up really well. If you take a look at the back, take a quick peek at the workings. So you've got things like circuit boards back here or whatever, and when you press it, you notice that bit that's going in and out, that's like, the, that's pretty much the, uh, what the actual button here presses on is that, and then that hits whatever micro switch or contacts are needed to make the circuit. And that is the up button. So now on to the down button, once I dust it. <laughs> And here is the down call station. Indicator present. Button once again. Button in good condition after restoration with permanent marker. And you can see on the back we have indicator boards. We'll turn it over a way that's sort of oh dear, better to see. You can see the indicator boards in there. And the button is missing bits. But it's the exact same system. And I've just dropped it again. This thing's so heavy, I've been working with these lift parts for so long now. It's getting a little tiring. Just physically tiring, that's all. Ooh. Heavy lift parts. But anyway, there's the down one. Like I say, not much different about it to the up, except the arrow points the other way. Missing some bits out of the guts, and it has a floor indicator. But anyway, that is all the parts here, but that is not all the parts in the collection. And there's one part I could not take through to the room because it is so big. I feel like how much I've got tired just moving this stuff around. Probably would have got that tired of moving that one on its own, as opposed to all of the parts that you've seen in this video, which is probably over an hour now, but I don't know, I haven't checked the time on it. So with that being said, let's now go and have a look at the one part that I have not shown yet, and we will wrap up the video with it. Somehow I almost forgot this, but we've got this OS call station here, it's vintage OS back button. Press to descend, press to ascend. The guts, all the bulbs, everything's there for it. Very good condition plate. I almost forgot about this, I tucked it off to the side just to maximise space. But with that being said, oh dear, that is it of that. The Otis, I think it's late 60s, this particular one stated from Intermediate Call Station. Otis Black Button. So I wonder what is coming next. And now the final piece, the COP of the UK lift. 14 persons, 1100 kilos. There's an indicator. Telephone's no longer there. Key switches, finally see what this key is for. Turns all these. We've got the fan. Light. Oh dear. It's sticking a little. And we'll leave that there. That's not optimal blessing, but whatever. There we go. Almost. Yay. That's how, that's how I want it to be. Alarm button. No, it's definitely not quite at the angle it was before. Uh, push to travel. And the door open. There's nothing else below that. So with that being said, that is going to do it for this parts tour. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, be sure to let me know what you think of all the parts, and there's a whole bunch of things that I actually let me know about or comment on throughout this very long video, so with that being said, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and that is going to be it. Oh, excuse me, that is going to be it.